Welcome, my friends. Layoffs at big tech companies have been ongoing since the spring. But now, layoffs appear to be accelerating. This includes established big names, Web3 unicorns, and everything in between. And even media companies. Today, we are hearing reports that Disney is laying off 7,000 employees. You probably recall that Disney abruptly fired CEO Bob Chappick and rehired Bob Iger as CEO. And Iger has made some pretty tough decisions in recent weeks. Disney's position in the entertainment ecosphere is not what it used to be. And Iger said that changes need to be made. That includes a major restructuring. And, of course, layoffs. Iger said that the layoffs and restructuring would enable $5.5 billion in costs cuts for Disney. The world is still reverberating from the 50% layoff at Twitter and the 11,000-person layoff at Meta. But it seems as though Wall Street analysts are rewarding CEOs for laying off employees. This video continues our coverage of the wave of layoffs sweeping the United States. What does it mean for the economy? And, what does it mean for the future of the United States? But, before we get into all of that, please press the like button and leave us a comment below. We would love to hear from you. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you are notified of upcoming videos when they are released. Disney said Wednesday it is planning to reorganize into three segments. The media and entertainment giant said it would now be made up of three divisions. Disney Entertainment, which includes streaming and media operations. ESPN division that includes the TV network and streaming service. And the Parks, Experiences and Products unit. Disney abruptly fired CEO Bob Chappick and rehired former CEO Bob Iger as chief executive. The Disney board received internal complaints from senior leadership. Bob Chappick was not fit for the job, according unnamed sources familiar with the matter. The executive change came together quickly, blindsiding Chappick and his closest allies. The Disney board did not seriously consider any other candidates, according to sources. The board was basically convinced that Disney's disastrous Q3 earnings report was related to complaints about Chappick's leadership. Disney CFO Christine McCarthy was one of the executives who expressed a lack of confidence in Chappick. McCarthy has been Disney's CFO since 2015 and was Iger's CFO before Iger retired as CEO in 2020. McCarthy has an established relationship with the board given her longevity in the position, said people close to the matter. The move marks the most significant action Bob Iger has taken since returning to the company as CEO in November. Disney announced the changes minutes after it posted its most recent quarterly earnings. On Wednesday during its quarterly earnings call with investors, Disney also announced it would be cutting $5.5 billion costs, which will be made up of $3 billion from content, excluding sports, and the remaining $2.5 billion from non-content cuts. Disney also said it would be eliminating 7,000 jobs from its workforce. That would be about 3% of the roughly 220,000 people it employed as of October 1st Street. Roughly 166,000 in the US and about 54,000 internationally. Like many companies, Disney reported disappointing Q3 earnings. And who did they blame? You guessed it, the usual whipping boy, weakening macroeconomic conditions. I think that Wall Street analysts are getting tired of hearing that. Shares of Disney fell sharply after the disappointing Q3 earnings call. In fact, the share price reached a new 52-week low, before rebounding a little bit later in the week. The company was looking for ways to trim costs, said Disney CFO Christine McCarthy in the earnings call. We are actively evaluating our cost base currently, and we're looking for meaningful efficiencies, she said. Some of those are going to provide some near-term savings, McCarthy continued. And others are going to drive longer-term structural benefits, McCarthy also said. Disney's streaming service Disney Plus lost $1.47 billion in Q3. But we should note that Disney Plus has accumulated 100 million subscribers in just three years since its inception. By way of comparison, Netflix took 20 years to build a subscriber base of 220 million that the streaming business is overcrowded and fragmented. Disney lost twice as much on Disney Plus in Q3 versus the prior quarter. McCarthy said losses at Disney Plus will improve in 2023. As you probably already heard, other large media and entertainment companies have made job cuts this year. Warner Brothers, Discovery, Netflix, HBO Max. I don't know about you, but I really wonder about this announcement. 
It seems that CEOs are getting the message from Wall Street analysts that the more layoffs, the more we will recommend your stock. And, I think that pretty much all big corporates have some number of fake jobs. There is always fat and waste in corporate organizations. But this one makes me a little suspicious. Disney has traditionally been a very well-managed company. And, despite its losses, Disney Plus has shown excellent growth. If it truly becomes profitable in 2024, that will be a good outcome. I often wonder when CEOs say that business travel should be cut to only essential trips. Why haven't they been approving only essential trips all along? It makes me feel that, outside of this newly created period of austerity, wasteful business trips are okay. And it somewhat makes me lose faith in how corporate America is managed. On the other hand, I would say that Disney has a lot of moving parts. Theme parks are just getting back on their feet after the pandemic. But have you checked entry prices to Disney theme parks lately? They are sky high. And I really wonder whether they are pricing out average American families. Disney does need to rationalize the financial picture and bring its earnings in line with stock valuation. But given the fragmentation of the streaming industry, consolidation must take place. So, Disney needs to decide whether it wants to be a buyer or a seller in that space. Given Disney's vast library of titles and ownership of ESPN, I would say that it needs to be a buyer. And, Warner Brothers Discovery needs to find a buyer. I would say that Disney needs to get its share price and earnings up so that it can be something of a consolidator in the streaming space. Hopefully for Disney, this newly discovered financial discipline will help to get them where they need to be. Meanwhile, layoffs continue in the tech patch. As you probably know, Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg just dropped the big one. Meta is laying off 11,000 employees. And, like a lot of Silicon Valley unicorn companies, time has come for the business to be rationalized. That is a tough medicine to swallow. And some companies will not emerge from this period alive. Others will have to merge with stronger companies. Some will probably shut down. 2022 has been filled with layoff announcements, especially from technology companies. Normally, the layoff percentages range from 10% to around 20%. That has normally been a fairly high percentage of employees to be cut in a layoff. But now that Twitter has made a 50% layoff seem acceptable, will that become the new normal? Despite all of that so far, soaring inflation and Fed tightening persist. And the United States is teetering on the brink of a recession. A growing number of companies are cutting their payrolls. Most CEOs believe that a recession is coming and want to prepare their companies for it. So, people are feeling uneasy about the security of their jobs. Consumers are pulling back on discretionary spending. Corporate marketers are cutting back on ad spending, especially online. And ad spending is the lifeblood of most big tech companies. Prior to last week, a huge layoff could be seen as damaging to the brand of a big tech company. Now, the opposite is probably true. This might be especially true when it comes to comparing one tech management team to another. Because now that Twitter is owned by Elon Musk, all other big tech CEOs will be compared to Elon Musk. So Elon Musk has the courage to cut 50% of the employee base. How much courage does Mark Zuckerberg have by way of comparison? And, Google CEO Sundar Pichai, for that matter. So, in many ways, Friday might have been a major turning point for tech companies. Now, the bigger the layoff, the better the company and the stronger the CEO and management team. It is not just Twitter. Many Silicon Valley companies are gearing up for recession with layoffs. Big tech firms have already announced many hiring freezes and layoffs so far in 2022. But, what do you think? Please leave us a comment below and hit the like button. We would love to hear from you. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you are notified of upcoming videos when they are released. Please share this video on social media. Thank you for watching.